We're back, boys and girls, in a different setting, in a different time of day, because my guest comes from very far east from me, and he is on a different time zone. It's, it's been a challenge trying to get this podcast going, but we're finally here. We're, we made it. So welcome my guest, Saeed Al-Jabri. Thank you for doing this, brother. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. And sorry, I have to make you work on my schedule. <laughs> Man, relax. I don't mind. I, I like changing things up and it gives me a chance to test to see where people enjoy watching live streams a bit more. But yeah, uh, you, you had an interesting evening last night, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> la, la, no worries, man. So it's, it's two-sided. So what happened with me, man, is uh, I've been doing this extreme conditioning. I'm trying to get into the best shape mm. I can be with jiu-jitsu. So I've been oh, doing nice. this insane workout. I, I finished okay. my workout, I'm super sore. My neighbor, this is at like two in the afternoon. My podcast with you is supposed to be at eight. So my neighbor comes up to me and uh, he actually calls me. He's like, listen, we're going f deep sea fishing. And I've said no to him like two, three times, right? And he's somebody related to work. So I, I felt bad saying no. I'm like, when, when can we be back? He's like six max. <laughs> we go fishing, yeah. man. And I'm stuck in the middle of the sea. I'm like, I felt like That's a bitch. That's like, Arabic timing. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, bro. Uh, <laughs> Can we go back? <laughs> but that's why I was late. And then I come back and you had a situation, right? Yeah. So basically you messaged me and I was going to shower. Okay. And then I'm like, okay, cool. We get delayed by one hour. That's not a big deal. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go make some tea and something waiting for you. I leave the shower and my phone drops and the screen gets all shattered. I'm like, oh, oh God, I have to be delayed. <laughs> oh no, man. Oh no. I'm, I'm, I'm glad sorry, we finally man. got it to happen to break yeah, that line of, of procrastination, man. But uh, yeah. uh, are you using the same phone? No, I use some, my brother's phone. Gangsta, gangsta. So your brother uh, forked it out for this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, Saeed, t tell me a little bit about you, man. I'm, I'm interested, like, you're originally Yemeni, right? Uh, yeah, I'm from Yemen, and we lived in Saudi for a bit. Okay. And then I came to Malaysia for studies, doing okay. university and stuff. Yeah, that's basically University, oh, so, but you grew up in Saudi high school and middle school and stuff? I grew up Yemen and Saudi mix. We kept on going between two countries, a few years okay. here, a few years there. But yeah, overall in the Middle East, and then now I'm in Malaysia doing so, my degree. Degree in what? Mechanical engineering. Oh shit! Okay, okay. So uh, not expected. supposed to be my last year, <laughs> but then yeah, Corona might have different plans. Oh my goodness! Oh no! So, is it going to delay your university? Like you're not going to be able I, to graduate? No, my graduation will be fine. But I was supposed to intern for three months. But that got cancelled, just got thrown out. So I have three months of doing nothing. Yeah. That's not too bad, man. That's, that's why a lot you of good memes. Yeah. Yep, that's why you see the memes are pumping. <laughs> Shade <Man>. is bored. <laughs> you, the quality of your memes, I have to say, they were always good, but they definitely yeah. stepped up their game in Corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but you have to do what you got to do. <laughs> what made you choose Malaysia, like out of all places? Uh, well... To be completely fair, it's the cheapest, <laughs> straight up. It's what? It was, it's the cheapest option there. Okay. And my, I think my family were more comfortable sending me to Malaysia other than Canada or whatever. Oh, and shit. The they, price difference, I guess. They're like, we don't want to lose Saeed to Canada. <laughs> like, yeah. To the clubs He's and the bars. He's not coming back if he goes there. <laughs> I know, man. Listen, I, I know what you're talking about because so many of my friends went the Canada and US route and they didn't graduate on time. Not anywhere near time. <laughs> <laughs> and they just end up sticking there. Over here in Malaysia, you have to leave. Like, after uh -huh. you're done, you have to leave. There's no becoming PR. There's no pulling a passport or something. Interesting. I didn't know here. this. Yeah. So, so unless you get a work visa, obviously. Yeah, unless you get a work visa. Okay, okay. Man, it, it's crazy, you know. Uh, it's good from you that you ended up going that direction, you know, for your yeah, future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the all works out in the end. I will never forget this. Um, we had a friend of ours. Uh, he went to Montreal, Canada. My brother studied in Montreal as well. And oh, nice. he, he got delayed a bit <laughs> to graduate because of the distractions there. But w there was one time I... I went to visit my brother in Canada and we're walking through a park and we don't know yeah. many people, obviously. He just knows his friends. But we're walking and we suddenly hear this guy shout out, Zaid, Saad. We're looking around like, who's shouting in Arabic in the middle of Montreal? So I'm walking around. I look, I can't find anybody. Then this guy starts approaching us from a park. It's an island park in the middle of the street and it's known as where bums go to suntan. All right. All right, so homeless people usually just sleep there in suntan. So one of the homeless people stood up, 
Zed, Zed. <laughs> and Zed started walking towards us. So we're standing there, like, shocked on the side of the road, and he comes up to us, and he's like, guys, you don't remember me? We're like, no, who the no. fuck are you? <laughs> of course we don't remember you. When did this happen? And it turns out it was a guy who went to school. Man, he was a high school friend that went to Canada, lost his fucking way totally. Yeah. And and because it happens, dude, man. Until yeah. that reality hits you. So good for you. You went to Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, I have friends who go to Canada, and then the problem is Canada is expensive. Not every family can afford you getting five, six years over there. So yeah. you either make it in time. But he wasn't so lucky. He got sent back. <laughs> the immigration yeah. were like, "We're not having you here." <laughs> That's the interesting thing. Yeah, like Canada's a lot more yeah. lenient with that, especially that time. Like we're talking around 15 years ago. Now, oh, yeah. holy shit, bro. Yeah. Now now you're yeah. coming in, you're going out on specific dates yeah. and you're paying a shitload. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know, man. I know. I heard. So engineering is uh, something you see yourself doing in the future? I guess. I honestly have no idea really about it. But I see myself doing mechanical engineering, but then a lot of things start to come up. So uh, when you enter university, you have a different idea of life. But then yes. <laughs> as you process in yes. third year, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm still as clueless as I started. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's an engineering, engineering out unless another door opens. Man, it's a funny process. Like you saying it out loud makes so much sense because we go into uni lost totally. We have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. Our parents pretty much choose for us what to do, uh, unless we're like gifted phenoms. Then by the time we graduate, we're like, this is not what I want to fucking do in my life, but it's too late. <laughs> yeah, and you're just as clueless. And you discover it's more complicated than you thought it was. But I yeah, see. Alhamdulillah, everything's going good so far. And you see yourself going back to the Middle East or you're enjoying Asia? Uh, it's complicated, but uh, I guess at the end of the road, maybe Yemen. But right now it's complicated with the whole... Uh, exactly, with the politics. The issues the, yeah, it's, it's, it's very complicated. So God's yeah, no. also, inshallah. Allah. Man, you know what? Like, I think because of... Like, you see these politics were an issue the last five years. But all of this corona pandemic, I think, puts things into perspective right what's really fucking important do we want a bit and bigger like i feel like all of these political problems are getting wrapped up yeah we're definitely skipping on some because everyone is wrapped up with corona yeah, you know yeah. one crisis comes we forget about the one before it and then another one comes and we forget the one before it man because yeah, I, I don't want any more <laughs> i don't want any more yeah we're it's all, only, it's only june worried. wait <laughs> exactly it's only movie. june my god man everybody's it's talking about aliens movie. Yeah, so, I'll wait for them. <laughs> my, my nieces and nephews, they're always the entertaining part of the family. And now they're convinced aliens landed. So they're showing me videos from aliens in Brazil, aliens on the moon, and all this crazy shit. Allah <laughs> I actually won't be surprised. I really won't be surprised. <laughs> if there was By a time December, for... yeah, Juju, my Juju comes out and it's the um, end. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because like, this is the time for, that, for them to come and be yeah. accepted. <laughs> if they came out last year, we'd be like, fuck off, we're not ready for you. Now we're ready for them. Yep. Now we're embracing them. Yeah, Juju Majuj privilege and stuff. Done. <laughs> so for, for, the, for the listeners uh, out there, yeah, Juju Majuj is basically uh, <laughs> in the prophecies in, in the religion of Islam, it's believed that towards the ends of uh, days, like Judgment Day, two two beings will come out, two creatures or some shit. Yeah, some, or one. Yeah, something so, like that. So it's like basically the Messiah. The sign of end of times. Yeah. It's the sign that the Messiah is coming and all of this stuff and like the end of times. Yeah. And, and I, I, everybody's really saying it. It's like, halas, it's the end of time. I'm not going to work. <laughs> like, yeah, what's the point? What are you doing? We just need an excuse, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, my people were tired. But it was a good break, I guess. It like, is, People were so caught up with life. And then the six months, you just Oof, took a break, tell me. I guess. But it's I'm time you, we go back on board. <laughs> absolute blessing. But I'm sure until you're alone in Malaysia or you said your brother's there with you? Yeah, it's just my brother, my younger brother. That's cool. How, what's the age difference? Three years. He's 18. 18 now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very yeah, cool. Thing, yeah. Are you guys close? Yeah. I guess you could say. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool, man. It's nice to have a brother with you all the way in Malaysia. A different world. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So t tell me something, man. What got you started into jiu-jitsu? Was it in Malaysia or was it before? No, it was definitely Malaysia. So okay. This, this, this MMA gym opened up and then I just went in and first I did boxing and you know, that's how everyone starts in martial arts. Yeah, they you want to do shit. boxing in Muay Thai because <laughs> they are the one who looks cool. You look at Jiu Jitsu you're like, what the fuck is going on? Why are exactly. they there? That's literally what happened. And then our coach, our Jiu Jitsu coach was the same coach as strength and conditioning. Mm. Right? There's some Brazilian guy. He's actually a student of Estima. 
Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So he was, uh, he kept on like bugging me all the time because we were basically close. Yeah. And he kept on bugging me all the time. Hey, Sae, try Jiu Jitsu, try Jiu Jitsu. I'm like, oh my God, this guy. <laughs> and then <laughs> after one of the competitions, he just gave me one of his extra geese. He's like, you know what? Just show up. Just, just show up and see what happens. Okay. Like, all right. I showed up and I guess the rest is history. You liked class, it? First time, no. My first class was me on belly. I was like, fuck this shit. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, the gym was still new and we didn't okay. have like like beginners and whatever. It was just like, you go in, whatever coach is teaching, you go there. It oh, was shit. the transition from me on belly to armbar. And I'm so new. I'm like, why is his knee on my belly? <laughs> exactly. Dude, I felt my soul crushing. But then I go, went to the second class and then... The people were nice. They took it slow and they taught me, by the way. And yeah, I kept on showing up. I, I can see where the humor came in early in your jiu-jitsu career. <laughs> I know, right? What a situation. <laughs> my soul on day one. <laughs> and are you still in the but same yeah, gym that you started in? Actually, no. I stopped for six months now. I mean, okay. three months before and then three months because of Corona. I see. But then, yeah. Because of studies. It's only one gym. The six months, I, I stopped in December, I think. And then, yeah, I took a break. Mm -hmm. But then by the time I was starting to think to come back, Corona was like, no, <laughs> you're staying I home see. for more. And, and what, gym, now, what gym? What's the gym that you go, go to? Ga Gains MMA. It's, Gains in MMA. it's a new gym. Actually, I'm wearing okay. their shirt. <laughs> nice. But then, uh, <laughs> yeah. But then they kind of closed down temporarily because okay. of the virus thingy. So, yeah. There. Are they doing online classes? No, I don't think so. No, okay. Because I see uh, Monarchy MMA in Malaysia. They're doing like online like crazy. They're doing workouts yeah. in parks. Yeah, I, I see the online the park thing. But then, I don't know. I don't, do you believe in like jiu-jitsu online classes? It's very weird. Unless you're doing like shrimps on your own. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, I'll like, be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I know, man. That, that'll be crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what, are you, what are you doing? Unless you're like training or like, I don't yeah. know. I, I just online classes never click for me, especially in jiu-jitsu. Man, okay. Let's see complete beginners that have never done jiu-jitsu. I actually think moving forward in the future, we should have online classes for people intimidated of starting and that have no idea what jiu-jitsu is to just possibly like sit down, understand what a shrimp is, understand how to move a little bit. You know, those like very timid people, maybe. But otherwise, I agree. It's it's a contact sport. Yeah, it's, I don't really see it. I don't really see it because like uh, part of it is jiu-jitsu is very hard to describe for someone who doesn't know it. Yeah. Like a lot of people just give you the look like, what are you doing? But then you only only get the satisfaction is after you go there even if you get beaten up it's all right mm. but then there is this weird addiction yes. that comes to it after getting beaten up that's true it's very weird it's very hard to explain to people it's very hard to get people into it yeah but then yeah you have to try it so i don't know if online is going to work they're going to be like what am i doing why am i doing this why am i doing that yeah, so, yeah I, I hope I think... this online era ends it quickly <laughs> and people go back you know, I think like we're just trying to make do with what we have, but you're right. Like part of jujitsu is the accomplishment that you overcame your fear, right? Being afraid and worried that you're going to get your ass kicked. You get your ass kicked and you realize it's not so bad and you feel better about it. Very interesting. And, and so do you see yourself when Corona ends going directly back to jujitsu? Do you miss it a lot? If the gym opens back, yeah, uh, you will. If it doesn't, I just go back to weightlifting. And I, I don't know. I'm just waiting for him to say we are back. If they're back, we are going back, to be honest. Interesting. But then, so, yeah, but then right now, I don't think they're going to open up anytime soon. Because they announced, they announced like the contact sports, wrestling, karate, and whatever, until 31 August. That's yeah. a long time for now. Yeah, so, yeah they said November they here. Uh, you guys are not open? No, oh, man. I thought UAE no. was open. Oh, no, God. brother. No, we're, we're at 600 yes. plus cases a day. Yeah, man. I saw it's insane. But I thought you were still open, you know, like, screw it. <laughs> no, man, thing. like, okay, it's weird. So a, a lot of things are closed, but they open the mall, <laughs> the place where the most people gather. Um, <laughs> business got run. <laughs> exactly, business got run. I saw this crazy stat that if this continues for one more year, 70% of companies in Dubai is going to close. Not like, if it continues one year. 70% closed. Right. It's not if it continues. It's to the, up to today, 70% are closing. 
to the day 70% already closed. Yes, that's what they're saying. It's not if, oh, it, if it continues. Oh, Butchered business oh, already, man. Bad. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that's really bad. Dubai opened up more than Abu Dhabi. They opened up gyms, but they're not allowing contact in jiu-jitsu. They're all training with dummies in the gym. I guess that's better than nothing. <laughs> it is, it is. But I think Abu Dhabi uh, in specific is on full lockdown, and we're not going to be back until November. Oh, God, that's so far. Yeah, it is. Okay. But it is. that's one year already. <laughs> You know, but most of us have a shitload of injuries. So everybody's doing surgeries. Everybody's doing physio. <laughs> you know, it's the time. Everyone is recovering. Like, oh my God, I haven't felt like this in a while. Exactly, man. So, so tell me then, like, you're, you're in this phase back and forth of going jujitsu or not, but you're obviously somebody who's passionate about it and has a big sense of humor to it. Like, what got you starting BGJ memes, please? Okay, so two, two months into jujitsu. So. Our previous coach, our previous style, did okay. not go well with me. It was, you know, the pressure of jiu-jitsu, go in, poha, seven times a week, yeah. kill yourself for it. It was that style. And for someone who never did anything other than weightlifting, that was a bad start. <laughs> oh, no. I went in one month in, two months, around like one month and a half, I got injured. I don't have no idea what happened, but something in my back and my shoulder became stiff. Okay. But I kept on showing up anyways. I don't know why mm. I did that, but I kept mm. on doing it and it got really bad. So I had to stop. Okay. I had to stop. And then when I stopped, I had nothing to do. So I was like, you know what? I might as well meme it. Interesting. <laughs> make memes about my struggles. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that time was, I was in a lot of pain. It's just weird. I think I did not break fall properly while someone took me down. I really don't know what happened. I see. You yeah, know, the, was, the scapula and the traps are the, one of the most common injuries in jiu-jitsu. One of the first injuries, I think injuries, it's one actually. of them. Yeah. Exactly. I think one of them is the, what happened to me. Yeah. But then, yeah, after that, I took a long gap, like four or five months. Mm -hmm. And then I started again. And then when I started again, it was a different coach. It was a different approach. I managed okay. to do it. I managed I to keep on cons consistent, consistent without getting injured. I see. But yeah, I started data memes three months after starting jiu-jitsu. Okay. Which was very weird because everyone else, if you see every big page, people yeah. like, because Jitsu is a black belt. <laughs> yeah. No, Jitsu is a purple belt. And I'm like, yes. oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> exactly. But then I guess I'm just there for the humor. And I'm just like, I never, I never try to give people advice. I'd be like, do this or do that. I'm like, listen, I'm just as noob as you are. And I find this right. funny. I'm going to meme it. That's it. <laughs> but I think that's what made you so relatable. Like I see a lot of people enjoying your, pot, uh, your, your, your page because, for example, with me, I try doing some memes, you know, just in order to guess, keep people in, engaged with the page. It's not my main core, but I, I noticed that as a purple belt, people would ask me questions and talk to me and feel relatable. With because jujitsu and because problems, they have that typical black belt persona. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, I think yeah. you, you hit the nail on the head with your page, being a beginner, sharing beginner memes. And, and you have actually pretty yeah. interesting memes beyond that. Because I think after you spend, like, Purple Belt is how much? Five, six years, seven years? I don't know. It depends how long it More. is. More. After, yeah, after that, a lot of stuff that was weird, you think it's normal. Yeah. Right? So, like, yeah. if you tell Purple Belt about Neon Belly, they'll be like, Neon Belly. But then tell someone new about Neon Belly, they'll be like, are you insane? Interesting. <laughs> what are you doing? So, yeah, a lot of these stuff, I notice it after. Like, I, I think I have, like, an outsider perspective of it. Yes. Like, what are you guys doing? I like what you're doing, but what are you doing? <laughs> this makes no sense. You know, that like, is so like interesting. That. So I guess that's why memes are more relatable. I yeah. Guess. Not really yeah. 100% sure. I just do whatever makes me laugh and I post it. Some of them do really well. Some of them just flop. But it is what it is. <laughs> but, but see, you're somebody who grew remarkably quickly and who has a, a very active following, which is nice to see in Jiu-Jitsu because I'm sure in your following you have black belts. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's, <laughs> I do. It's definitely weird, but then I do. <laughs> so it, it's interesting that you just started Jiu Jitsu recently. You're a white belt, yet you have black belts following you and liking every single post, which shows that understanding Jiu Jitsu isn't about just training Jiu Jitsu. It's not about on the mats. And having that sense of humor is part of yeah, it. Like, cause everybody online right now is watching memes and looking at humorous videos with Jiu Jitsu. Because I think there's an overload of people giving advice, courses mm. and whatever. Every, everyone wants to be everyone wants to be the respected black belt. I'm yeah. there, I'm like, guys, I am so bad at jiu-jitsu, you don't understand how bad I am. <laughs> but I find it funny and I'm yes. going to meme it. And a lot of people, 
because I have, I have a feeling that introduced to, to admit that you're bad it's kind mm. of a taboo everyone is you know for hard 24/7 I'm gonna right. work out hard I'm gonna like I don't tap to pressure I'm like screw you I'm tapping to pressure <laughs> like thank I... me and I'm tapping <laughs> <laughs> I love it you know like there's this looking tough yeah very true and not just accepting that you know some, sometimes it's a side thing it's not my main my yes. main goal to be like I don't look forward to be a black belt maybe a purple belt I don't know it depends on how broken I get while I'm there because I'm white belt and <laughs> I'm already pretty broken from the jiu-jitsu <laughs> I feel you but man then, yeah, yeah but then that's, as I said there's a lot of people who want to give me you know that I'm dedicating my entire life and it's all about right. jiu-jitsu training jiu-jitsu posting jiu-jitsu blah 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 and I don't I really it's up to them but I don't think that's very healthy the obsession of this and I think it just like bites you at the end man, I don't know but, Saeed you and he, you're, you're so accurate in, in the sense that we end up kind of cult-like in the way that we do jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah. We end up like a cult. And yeah. um, I had this guy message me the other day. I posted a picture of Nusrat, right? You know, so, yeah. it's all right. Don't worry. The sound, we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know Nusrat Salt Bay? The, the Turkish guy that has a meat okay, restaurant yeah, in his yeah. So he, he, he posted this picture of a shitload of cows around him that were ready to be killed and everybody freaked out. So my friend sends me a picture. He's like, man, these damn vegans, they're so serious. And every single vegan, they have to let the whole world know that they're vegans, right? And then I replied to him. I'm like, why is there BJJ in your Instagram name, fucker? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so accurate. You know, like, you can do BJJ without telling people that you do BJJ. I know exactly. it sounds insane, but you can. It's possible. We're yep. the vegans of combat, man. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And there's this weird obsession that you have to put everything else down. You have to yeah. put everything else down. It's oh, yeah. top. It's the top. It's the top martial arts. Screw karate, screw Aikido, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it is what it is. That's very true, man. I, I, I like this, uh, this approach because in the end of the day, in a gym, in any gym, maybe 5% ends up competitors, right? That's true. Uh, maybe 30 to 40% end up reaching all the way to black belt. The rest, they're just, they're, they're just there for the good vibes, for the friends, for hanging out, right? Yeah, exactly. But then, even, I don't know the stats, but how, I want to know how many people make it to blue belt. <laughs> Screw black belt. How many people make it to blue belt? It's surprisingly low. Know. Surprisingly low. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, the, I, I watched this with Henner and Hiron Gracie talking about it. Apparently, there are more people that make it to blue belt than make it to purple. Because I mean, most people, they train white belt and they're like, they reach blue belt. They're like, fuck, I survived. Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> Not just that, you, the jump from the best white belt to the worst blue belt, honestly, is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> And then when you're a white belt, you can basically get beaten up by everyone. And you could always pull up the arm of white belt. But the moment you're a blue belt and then you get beaten up by two stripe or three stripe white belt, that's when your ego starts getting hit and it becomes time. more tough. Everyone takes it easy on white belts. Everyone loves white belts. But then blue belts, you're in the, I don't know, others. <laughs> it's like you're 13, 14 years old. You think you know everything, but you don't. Everyone's just harsh on you for some reason. Well, well then, said, yeah, man. I guess. That's uh, that's a very true thing. Like when I was a blue belt, I first got my blue belt. I remember I was so proud. The first two weeks, I was a killer. It, it did something to my brain. I was a killer. And then that hit me. I got over the fact that I just got promoted and now I'm the shit. And uh, uh, black belt judo is a blue belt jujitsu and that whole my mentality. Oh, then, <laughs> then it hit me. What if a white belt taps me? And then I started getting tapped by white belts. <laughs> like my mindset changed. That's the only thing that changed, not my ability. And I think belts do that to you. Like the first phase of receiving a new belt really screws you up. Yeah, it's a weird validation, but then... It is. Yeah. But then I think after this whole mentality drops after purple, I guess. Because after purple, you've been doing it for so long. It's just part of your life. Actually, it doesn't yeah. really matter. The whole yeah, drama, the interest, all happens in white and blue. After you make it, I saw something that basically if you're a purple belt, you're going to make it to black because you're already committed so much. Interesting. Time. Interesting. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And you have too many injuries to go back. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah, you cancel out every other sport. There's how no do you get cauliflower? Exactly. How do you get, how do you cancel like cauliflower ears and like banged up knees? Everybody, I, I'm an accountant. It's like, no. <laughs> Oh God! Do you have cauliflower ears? Uh, so, 
interestingly enough, my, my life was very good up until purple belt. Uh, I don't know how I, I got through blue belt without any cauliflower ears, but once I hit purple, nobody, st nobody takes you lightly anymore. Like, everybody thinks it's a battle to the death, and that's when you get all the impact. So my right ear started to get a little bit of a cauliflower, but nothing crazy yet. Oh, God. Yeah, but then at purple belt, I guess, I don't know, you deserve it or something. You've been doing it for so long. Deserve it. I, I'm actually one of the kind, like, a lot of people look at it as a trophy. I don't, mm. you know? I mean, it depends on what you do. If you're in, yeah. like, I don't know, corporate life, you have something else and you have a cauliflower ear, you look like a gangster. <laughs> yeah. You might not want to show it. Yeah, that's I, true. Two months into jujitsu, I think it's normal. When I start sleeping, my ears start hurting, and I'm like, "Oh God, no!" And I have big ass ears. I'm like, "Oh God, <laughs> I'm gonna look like Khabib or something." And then <laughs> the problem is, I saw this meme. It's one of the best memes. It says, "If you ever, if you ever get cauliflower at white belt, you might as well just continue." <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Just continue. You can't have cauliflower and suck at fighting. Just <laughs> so it's good. It's a trap. Yeah. Man, that, that's a nightmare because when. The problem is a lot of people, ooh, tough guy, but then people want to test you. And then that's oh. the problem. Cauliflower, white belt, oh shit, man, you're going to have a hard life. You better, you better continue. <laughs> you better continue, indeed. So yeah. what, what gives you inspiration for memes? Do you, see a, do you see like a template and then get the idea or do you get an idea then look for the, the, the picture? Okay, so basically there's two ways. One of them is literally sometimes I'll be doing something else, completely something else. And I would think of something and be like, that happened. That could be a meme, then I do it. And some, but this doesn't work all the time. Sometimes I would literally have to scroll the internet for templates, I like see, which yes. one is BJJ memes related, which one. And it can be stressful at times. It's not always easy to find it. Yeah. Because you need, you need a balance of a meme that would make everyone laugh. Yeah. Because you can't make a meme just for the, what they call it, people <laughs> are advanced. So like heel hooks memes, like when mm. I started, I never got them. I didn't know what heel hook is. Yeah. So you make a meme that's, in between white, black, like somewhere, somewhere in, what do you call it? Everybody can understand it. Yeah, it has the maximum exposure, I guess. I see, so I have, see, okay. Yeah, and you don't want something people are gonna share. You don't want like these small, like leg lock, the 50-50 meme. I'm like, no one understands <laughs> that. <laughs> Get out of here with that meme. Make something general for everyone, something funny. Very and, true. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, I have a question for you, all right? And don't blush. How long have you sat in the toilet making memes? What's your record? Uh, <laughs> I have sat, I wouldn't say in the toilet, but yeah. sometimes I would sit for two hours, scrolling, yeah. <laughs> trying to find something to make a meme about it. Yeah. And then I have very limited time, because yeah. most of my audience are in the US, so it's ah. 12 hours difference. So I, I have to post at 10 p.m., midnight, and sometimes at 3. So I keep on scrolling, 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 and I can't find it. But sometimes it works out perfectly. Yeah, yeah. it's been a struggle. I started maybe two years ago, something like that, a year and a half. Ah, you're a veteran, man, so I can learn a lot from you. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, with meme creations, I end up having to batch them. I create like 10 at a time so that I can survive a week. Because it's not easy making memes, man. You have to really commit a lot of energy and time to sit and create good memes. <laughs> I tried that approach that I'll do a bunch of them, but then I burn out. I'll be like, okay, I'll make one meme. And then okay. after I post that, God solves the next one. <laughs> you, you, we'll see what happens. <laughs> You're going on pure tiring. spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because it is tiring. It's tiring trying to be funny all the damn time. Sometimes you're just not in the mood to laugh. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to make someone else laugh. So yeah, it gets it gets tiring, but I think it's rewarding at the end. It's nice so you, to just post and you sit and sit. Because of that exact point, and I'm not the most comedic person in the world, right? So what I ended up starting to do is questions rather than just memes. So I put like four pictures together. And my last one was Gordon Ryan, Marcelo Garcia, uh, Mickey, uh, Mikey Musumeci, and uh, was Andre Galvan. I'm like, who would you take with you to a riot <laughs> since there's a riot going? <laughs> Gordon Ryan, not even thinking about it. Man, you, <laughs> the you, guy you, gonna show up with a shotgun. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you take Gordon Ryan with you to a riot, if it was a small mall front riot, it's gonna turn into a pandemic. It's gonna turn into a huge riot because he will light <laughs> shit up. You're gonna survive. <laughs> it's gonna show up with guns. That's for sure. Maybe, maybe. As some people were like, I'd go with Andre Galvan. Gordon Ryan is different. Is different. <laughs> Gordon Ryan is a. He's on two sides. He's a troll, and he's a guy that gets trolled, right? 
yeah. He's both he's, of them at the same time. Sometimes it's hard to follow him. So yeah. I, I, my history is I follow him, unfollow him, follow him, unfollow him. But sometimes it's really funny. Sometimes you're just like, what are you doing? Just like, cut it out. But then you can't deny his talent. He really yes. can How old is 23, you know. 24? And he's been tapping out everyone. Terrifying. No one wants to challenge him. That's insane. Sometimes I think of him like, he's only three years older than me. <laughs> That's exactly. insane. Exactly. But, but yeah. To be that jacked. I guess. <laughs> Let, yeah. You know, aside the no recently, Gordon Ryan um, started trolling a rapper. Did you see this? Young Yummy or something like that. Yes, yeah. Yummy Yummy or some shit, man. He he tore him a new asshole. Honestly, online, <laughs> completely fucked him but up. Then, yeah, but then he just gave the guy more exposure. <laughs> like the guy was had half of his followers. Exactly. Then like you, you followed everyone. I never knew who the guy was. Now I yes. know who the guy is. Yes. <laughs> so I guess it's, it was worth it for the guy. But that's the internet, and and internet sometimes loves drama and partitioning, oh, yeah. and it ends yeah. up to the benefit of both people. And Dylan, um, Dylan Danis, Gordon Ryan, these guys, they know it. They know that this is how it works. Look at Dylan, man. This guy, honestly, man, the shit that he posts, he can't back up. Yeah, but that's the problem. Gordon Ryan can't back up. Dylan can't. <laughs> that's the issue. Like when Gordon Ryan trash talks people, I'm like, you know what? He gets to do that. <laughs> as much as I don't like it, he gets to do that. Yes. He's literally asking you, come and fight me. But on the other, other side, they don't do that, which gets them trolled more. You know, brother, yeah. be, being, being a fellow Middle Easterner, and knowing that Dylan Danis comes from Armenia, right? Which is kind of Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're pretty know close. So he's, he's Armenian. So his sense of humor is close to ours. But Americans and the Westerners are not understanding something. When Dylan Danis posts a picture wearing uh, like crutches in the leg and then like middle fingers and says, come at me, right? The, the Americans are like, oh, he's tough, or oh, he's 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 showing off, or he's not. Us Middle like Easterners, we know <laughs> it's a hashkel. <laughs> like this is a. <laughs> he's posting it ironically. <laughs> exactly, he's posting it ironically, but everybody gets all split up against it. <laughs> yeah, I guess makes sense. The internet's very easy to get riled up. Sometimes when I'm lacking a little brief, just take a post of Conor McGregor and just post it. Make a meme about Conor McGregor. You get insane amount of views. Insane. Oh, that's the easiest way to get viral. <laughs> Connor and Khabib. Just memes them. That's your way to success. <laughs> but then what kind of followers do you end up with? You end up with following, but then here's the interesting thing. I made a meme about Connor uh, the day of eight. The day okay. before eight. I, I just posted a meme and like, screw it. It was a bit of hateful meme. I don't know what he said. I think when he said that he's the best or something on Twitter oh. or something like that. I posted a meme. I forgot about it. I woke up and then I'm checking the DMs. I got at least six pure hateful DMs. I'm like, bro, what did I do? <laughs> it's a meme. Chill. Everyone. And then because I have my pictures in the, what they call it, in the ask me a question. Yeah. God, they changed <laughs> Some people took my picture, took Osama Bin Laden, put it in the same picture. I'm like, bro, oh, relax. Oh, <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I was wearing the Amama thing. Yes. The turban, like, yeah, and then they would put it and then someone. So, yeah. <laughs> You you get the attention, but it comes at a cost. Sometimes people are just like you know what they call it, yes. just come at you. <laughs> Man, that's a, that's it's a difficult place to be, especially as a Middle Easterner in the internet. But thankfully, you know what? I feel like us Middle Easterners, we we climbed that hill and we're on the slide down. We're out of the fire, right? I feel like we kind of got out of it. Yeah, for now I just take it for the memes. Whenever someone says says, I just laugh. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, bro. It is what it is. So, so I, I never really faced it as the problem. I'm, I'm glad to hear it, man, because when I graduated high school, it was right after 9-11, <laughs> okay? And all of us got fucked. <laughs> like, white, dark, Where? tanned. As long as you're Arab, you got screwed. Wait, when did you graduate high school? I graduated high school 2002. No, where? Uh, in Abu Dhabi. Oh, okay. uh, but, but then, like, we all want to go to university, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I have no this visas st- man listen no in the beginning because we got accepted and we got our visas and everything but it's it just became a different process so a friend of mine kills me with his story he he went to new york to study right he, he that was his dream university which was just where everybody's really wired up about middle easterners then 
He goes there to study. Every time he goes through the airport, they would frisk him, check him sideways, upside down, everything. And he's like, man, it, it was getting fucking tiring. So listen, this is no hate on any, any section of po the population, but this is fact, what he did, and it worked. And he told me, he's like, bro, don't tell anybody, but I have to do this to get into the US these days. I'm like, what? He's like, I pretend I'm gay. He's like, nobody fucks with a gay guy. Asylum. Yeah, because the same time there was so much hate towards Middle Easterners, there was a lot of understanding towards the homosexual population. 2001, 2002, that was when gay marriage started being allowed and the U.S. felt like we can't say bad things about homosexuals anymore. We can't call people gay or whatever, right? So, so he had took advantage of that as a Middle Easterner because he's dark-skinned okay. and he looks... <laughs> so he'd wear a pink T-shirt. It works, it works. Man, oh I'm telling God. you, bro. He'd literally wear a pink t-shirt, go to the airport and lisp, like do the extra S and, and start talking in ways with all, and they just fuck off. Go, go through. I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Damn. I don't know if I want the visa that much to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we had to do. But these days, man, we're all good. We're all good. Uh, I guess you can say that. You can say that. I, I, honestly, I never suffered anything from it, especially when uh, in the social media thing. First, I was okay, scared to put my face on it. Up till 15,000 followers. Yeah, until then I was really scared of putting my face because you know what they say once you put something on the internet, you can never take it back, right? I was like, Oh god, I don't want to post something and then this stuff haunts me. Yes. I don't want to post a meme and then I don't know. Once I get a job, the interviewer just gets something like you posted this meme about 9 11. So I was really scared, I was Damn. really scared about this stuff, but then eventually I said, You know what, screw it. I posted it, and surprisingly, more people felt relatable. Mm. So for the first 10,000 followers, I was just a generic meme. There was nothing okay. to it. It was just like a meme page. There's no character behind. There's no one. No one. Everyone kept on asking me, what belt are you? And I never replied. I After 10,000 pages, I'm like, I'm never going to reply. Why are you? What do you want from me? I can't give you advice. <laughs> and then I think at 11, so I'm like, yo, I'm a white belt. <laughs> I'm asking yes. you for advice. Yes. After I said that, so I had my competition. I competed once. Okay. So then I was like, guys, help me. I had at least 15 black dogs just giving me random tips. I'm like, oh, this Amazing, shit. man. Said, yeah, they were like, okay, do this. I'm like, yo, I'm struggling with pulling guard. I'm like, okay, try this. And then, nice. and yeah, I guess it goes better after I told people, yo, I'm a white belt. How did and that I competition no go? Idea the competition went absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love it. It was not what I expected, but the preparation was worth it, I guess. The discipline you get before the competition is worth it. But then at the competition, it was... The problem is I told people that I'm competing. I did ah. not think I have followers in Malaysia. Like, I knew I had one or two. I see. And then I'm nervous. I'm looking left and right. Someone pokes me. I'm looking at him like, who are you? It's like, you're the meme guy. I'm like, no, oh, oh yes, no. I am the meme guy. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're about to become a meme. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, when I lost, when I lost, two people saw it. Yes. I'm not lying. Until today... They're like, yo, you lost a guard puller. <laughs> Whenever I make fun of a guard pulling people, they just say like, yeah, remember you lost to it. Someone's like, you lost to it. I'm like, bro, okay, I get it. <laughs> Quit cyberbullying. That's what haunts you. But then it's all you. jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's all jokes and it's all good. I don't really mind it. Man, I never imagined it because like I'm beyond the, the age of job interviews. I think I'm set in my way. But like I just imagine you walking into a mechanical engineering job interview afterwards and they stumble on your page. <laughs> It's like a portfolio of questions. <laughs> I know, right? The questions. I mean, I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. <laughs> Man, you know what? But These days, everybody wants different. Nobody wants typical anymore. So this is good. I guess, I guess you can say that. I can say that. How is your uh, podcast thing going? You suggested I do YouTube because then, oh my God, that's a lot of work. It is. It is, man. But look, honestly... Um, Talking personal life-wise and, and things like this, you have to have something that you enjoy doing so you don't go crazy. So many people these days, they just focus on the money and the career and they end up miserable and they end up very bad parents, husbands, wives, you know, uh, family members because they're just not happy in their life. So jujitsu to me was the first escape and then this media side just makes me happy. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy like... Just feeling like the Middle East has somewhere that they can talk about jujitsu openly. That's, yes, uh, it's been going good, man. It's been received well. And like you see, like people like you, I get to meet from around the world that are doing some interesting shit That's that nice. I wouldn't have <laughs> met otherwise. Yep. And I saw the list that you have. You have a lot of people. 
Christina. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the Mauritian coach. That's actually my friend's coach. He's like, my coach is going to just stuff. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, he's having an interview today. I'm like, Who? Are you talking about Yassine? Then, yeah, Yassine. Okay. Because uh, he was on chat saying, yo, Said, <laughs> I, I usually don't cross. I can't chat. see you. I can't, yeah. Yeah. can't see anything. I'm just on Zoom right now. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, but then he... But then, you know, something surprising. When you post it on Facebook and on mm-hmm. Instagram, mm-hmm. so the problem in my BJJ memes mention, I can't see it. Like, I get these a lot of likes and it doesn't specify which one is spam like. So it gets down, gets scrolled all the way down. So I didn't see you mention me in the group. But I got like three random people I'm like, yo, you're in a podcast. I'm like, how did you know? Like, he mentioned you. He mentioned nice. you. I'm like, well, that's nice. Yes. Having a high exposure, that's nice. Man, honestly, I think it's because um, people are enjoying just the authenticity of this podcast. Like, if, if you do a show like the federations are doing, when you have an organization, they have like two cameras on the side and a professional setup. It feels scripted. Here it's yeah, me and you. You're space. you're in, you're literally in Starbucks, <laughs> right? And we're just <laughs> shooting the shit, talking yeah. about it. And people enjoy that. They like being a, a third person in a conversation while they're working out, while they're doing things. That's true. That's true. Podcasts are really getting popular. That's nice. One hundred percent, man. And obviously popularized by Joe Rogan, right? He's my uh, yeah. Braulio Estima. He's my idol in, in this space. <laughs> One day you get him in your podcast. <laughs> Imagine that, man. That's something. That would be something. Yeah. And did you did you know Said anything about meme culture, like the history of memes? Nope, absolutely not. But I see where it's going, and I'm living through it. But I have I don't know how it started. I think I googled it and I forgot about it a long time ago. So like, Wait, did you did you do I, a meme research? <laughs> I did, man, because like <laughs> guilty guilty of it. But b- before I interview people, I try to research a little bit of their focus, right? I don't want. Every podcast interview, I like to focus on a theme rather than just the person, right? To give people value. And so I did some research and I found out that this shit goes back to Darwin, Charles Darwin, oh, right? <laughs> uh, a theory of evolution. And then in, in the 1970s, um, a guy called Dawkins, he kind of popularized the concept of memes. And he was saying that the human ability to take a symbol an art form and turn it into a meaning, a representation of a problem or a struggle, right? Yep. And bring humor into it is a psychological thing that we do as humans that we've been doing since the caveman times. So I cavemen really used to do it. memes. Exactly. They used to do memes on the cave walls. And then another caveman would come. He'd see that meme because it wasn't just art. It was a meme. And, and right. he'd get that same emotion that that previous caveman got. And it connects them yeah. with each other. Yeah. That's weirdly interesting. It is, man. You, know, and, and, you see sometimes these, uh, like you just see a random post and then the caption is same. And you know what he means, even though yes. there is no context, or whatever, yes. and you just know what it means. Exactly. Uh, I always found it weird how we understood it, but never really think into it. They were but saying that, now, on, on your point, on your point, Said, on this one, they're saying that we have gotten to a point of an evolution, like memes have gone through an evolution, just like humans have, and they evolve in time. The internet, what you're doing, is the current pr- frontier of meme evolution. Yep, totally, 100%. And then now even use it as advertisement. Sometimes it pisses me off, but I'm guilty of doing it. <laughs> okay. Then, uh, you see, it, it's easier, if you're going to make a post, it's easier to meme it for it to reach higher reach. For example, if you follow Donald Trump, do you follow his Facebook? Yeah. He, he memes Joe Biden so bad. And then people <laughs> laugh and it's funny. Yes. But then it low key discredits the guy, get it? Of course. Like it's a fast yeah, it's a faster way to reach more people. And that's why even you see a lot of pages when they advertise, I'm guilty of it, and a lot of pages do it. They don't put an advertisement by this key or by this course. They're gonna make a meme about yes. this stuff, even if it talks bad about it. Get yes. it? Like for example, the lapel encyclopedia. I will always make fun of the warm guards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will make a meme about how annoying the warm guard is because I find it annoying. I hate being stuck in it. Okay. And then, even though the meme kind of talks bad about it, it reaches more people and it gets more conversion. It's weird. One hundred percent. Just like we said, when Gordon Ryan talked shit about Yummy, nobody knew who the fuck Yummy was, right? It's not that nobody knows what warm guard is. <laughs> yeah. But but in, in a sense, you discover the worm guard and lapel encyclopedia through that meme. It's next level advertising, man. Yeah, it, it's very effective to be honest. It's much better than like direct direct advertising. 
You know, Said, I, I genuinely think that uh, if for whatever reason engineering ends up not being your cup of tea, you could be a yeah. digital advertising or a digital consultant because what you do is understand what the internet wants. And that's huge today. I tried doing digital marketing. I hated every single minute of it. How? I did Why? Marketing. I did digital marketing for it. I would say I was decent. Okay. But I just, I just hated it. Like, I, because in BJJ means I'm doing it for me. I'm making right. money. I'm not making money. It's different. It doesn't happen. Okay. Digital I get marketing, you. I have to go take someone, let's say a car dealership. I'm, mm. I'm trying to sell him his product. I'm trying to get people to him. And it's so <laughs> not relatable. It seems all fake. Yes. And the problem is you can, you can see through it. Nowadays, I don't think people yeah. are as dumb as like more they're more aware of it yeah 100 percent. they're more yeah so it just feels it just feels repetitive and i hate it digital marketing i was like good field not for me yeah i see you now i see what you're saying but maybe again maybe you'll throw in their car in your bjj memes <laughs> find a way to maybe get one that day I, maybe i'll advertise it but i'm not really looking forward to i don't know making a brand out of bjj memes Okay. Like I'm just doing it. It's for the memes. That's I like it. that, man. You know, like it's just for the memes. Maybe I'll do ads here, pay the bills or whatnot. Not gonna lie about it. And then I'll just make the memes. Yes. And that's it. Not gonna make it. Like I tried making it what we call it, sort of a business. It mm -hmm. takes the fun element away from it. You get, get scared. You. Like for now, if I make a meme and someone doesn't like it, I'll be like, screw you. I have 23,000 people who like it. But if I want him as a customer, I'll get scared. Like, you know what? You don't like mm. it. I'm gonna take it down. But if I don't want them, it's like if I just want it, I just, I just want it for the meme itself. Yeah. No one really controls what I can say, so I just can say I'm like screw it. You like it or you don't. Get it? Man, that's a lot of foresight. I like that your your head screwed on straight when you think about it, because a lot of people make that mistake and they come out disingenuous, and then people just dump them. Yeah, but people can really tell if you're fake. It's weird. It's it's funny. Like with, with social media, I think you have to cross a certain point. Where at that point, you can say whatever the hell you want. You can be as like blunt about advertising and it doesn't matter. Like Gordon Ryan status, like these guys, they literally tell you, like, I'm advertising this, buy this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but then I think that that's very hard. Uh, that's very hard when it comes to like, how do I say it? When you're starting out, let's say when I was under 1,000 followers and I'm under 1,000 followers, it's very hard because you want everyone to like you. Yeah. So you will suck up in every possible way. <laughs> I see, I see. When when you reach and go to Ryan, you really have the validation from everyone. As okay. he says, stats, stats, stats. The stats is, yeah. It's already validated. When you reach there, when you're making money anyways, you don't really care what people say. Mm -hmm. So I understand when the smaller, when people are starting out, you just see they're sucking up for everything. They're trying yeah. to be as nice as possible to everyone. But yeah. then once you're independent, you, you see the true side of people. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. I can... I can bet you money that Gordon Ryan, if he wasn't so successful, he wouldn't be like this. If he was like an average grappler, he would be way nicer. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you something interesting about Gordon Ryan. I, I got like, I've been following him since before he got famous. And oh, nice. yeah. we always That's chatted. Wild. We always chatted. Yeah. And he's always a nice guy, man. He is super humble, super kind. And whenever I post something and I tag him on it, I don't know how the, how he has the time because you know how much like, DMs he probably gets. He makes the effort to come, like the comment, comment on people that are commenting on my post. Mm. I mean, that, that says a lot about it. He's very active online. He's very active online. I'll give him that. Oh, yeah, man. But but you yeah, can't do very, that if it's not from your heart. You know that. Yeah, if you don't I, like it, you can't be that consistent. 100%. But then, you know, I don't know how it is at his level. I mean, I'm, I still have 20, only 23,000 following. He has 250. I don't know how yeah. spammy it gets for him. But then sometimes it can be hard to catch up with the comments, especially mm. when something goes viral. Because like one of the ways to get your Instagram higher is they say reply to every comment. Okay. Sometimes I post, I post a meme and then I wake up as 300. I'm like, no way. <laughs> yeah, my day's gone. And no way. <laughs> yeah. No way I'm posting it. So the way he's keeping it at that rate, I don't know how he's doing it. Like I get tired of it and I don't even have that much. And I don't think he has like a PR manager that's going through his comments either. Like he's genuinely doing this shit. No way. No PR manager will approve of anything he says. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Man, you know what's funny actually that, that you bring this up? I feel like a lot of PR managers are in lockdown or quarantine because the brands that used to know what the fuck they were doing online have lost the plot. They're all making mistakes. Did you notice this? 
<laughs> Give me an example. CrossFit. The guy typed Floyd 19 as a response to a tweet. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and he lost every single affiliation. Man, I think his, he didn't go through a PR manager to post that for sure. Actually, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, recently here in Malaysia, one of the gyms, they messed up the same thing. The okay. same way. One, one of the girls, they had this offer about if you're overweight, we're going to make you thin and blah, 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 whatever. So this one of the girls, she was like, yo, I'm broke. Can you do it for me anyways? And I'll advertise for you or whatever. She said something okay. along these lines. Okay. And then out of everything, the gym replied. <laughs> if They went through her Instagram page. Oh, no. And they're like, if you're rich enough to travel, you're rich enough to afford us. I'm like, what kind of business is this? Of course, she screenshotted yeah. it. She screenshotted it. Posted Captain. it in her place. Yeah. And then they just, I think... They, I think they even closed down their Instagram. I'm not sure. But they got a lot of hate. They just ruined the brand in a day, in a night. Oh they ruined my everything. God. So maybe the PR people are locked up. I think <laughs> so. Like, I, th I think that was the gym owner thinking he could handle social media. <laughs> and then he needs the money because he's in lockdown too. Yeah, but, but that's like a major fuck up. I don't know how. Like you already don't have people. It's already quite. You're already losing customers. Someone yeah. offered you to pay half the price. And you say that, that's insane. Yeah, like burn the place down. Man. Might as well. Might as well. <laughs> the internet is interesting, man. Internet could be something beautiful where it gives you like freedom, information, and like just open conversation around the world. And it can be also used for shit. Like you see a lot of people hunting celebrities, a lot of people hunting brands, trying to trap them, screenshot, and getting their share of fame by doing that, right? On the expense of others. And I think that's the, that's the scary part. I don't know. I feel like it's too open that you could easily. It depends on how how rich, how famous you are. For example, if I go on Instagram and I make fun of anything, even if let's say I went bad and I went against whatever's going on right now, <laughs> yeah, I I doubt I'm gonna get any backlash. But then okay. when you are at their level, you have know, five hundred thousand followers plus, anything you do, people are gonna screenshot it. And thinking about it, I don't know if I want to reach that. <laughs> Exactly. My, my, here's the ca catch-22, Saeed, is you, you post something now that you know that people won't give a shit about or you think that you're not that famous, right? Then you yep. get famous in a year and people go back to and, these posts. Yep, 100% it backbites you so bad. I actually, <laughs> I actually, when I first started, around 300, 400 followers, everyone was making fun of karate. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make fun of karate. And okay. I made a meme. It wasn't even that bad. Chuck Norris <laughs> memes? I don't know what I meant, but something that karate is trash. That's what that's what I reached. Okay. And then after I forgot about it. And then after a while, someone was like, "Why are you making fun of the other martial arts?" I'm like, "I don't." And he was like, mm. "Yes, you do." And this dude scrolled <laughs> all My the way God. to Feb. To Feb, he's like, "See, you did it here." I was like, "Bro, you don't have anything to do." I deleted it because I don't want anyone else to see it. It was it was a dumb meme. It was a mistake. Well played. Yeah, but then he he found it. And I'm like, imagine that. In a larger scale. Oh my God! Because you got—I uh, just opened your page. You have 662 posts, but you've—you must have yeah. deleted some. N not more than 10. Since you started? Really, yeah, not more than 10. So how often do you post? Well, after Corona, three times. A day. But then I think, yeah. But then I oh. think I, what I do is I would reach, I would go overkill, and then I would back down. Like if you've seen last week, I posted twice. I see. But if you check the week before it, it was three per day. No. With enough, my reach went a million. Like the reach went almost a million. I was Holy like, shit. Holy shit. <laughs> There's a million people looking at my memes. That's insane. Yeah, it's because a lot of people are, are at home. Yeah. But then now I stopped. I bet it dropped to 500,000. 600,000. Okay. I'm like, still insane, but uh, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. And, and so... Sometimes you go through phases where you're just not making memes. Like you don't feel like yeah. making memes. I'm like, I'm sorry again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But I will do the, so my feed is purely jiu-jitsu and MMA memes. Mm -hmm. I try and make, like sometimes UFC memes, MMA and jiu -jitsu. But my stories doesn't have to be. I don't know if you watch my stories. Yeah, but yeah. My story is the, and... it's the wildest thing you can ever be. Politics, <laughs> religion, everything's there. Nothing off limits. And sometimes I get this funny stuff like, the, last, the latest one was about Greta Thunberg. So okay. I was like, what's your opinion on it? And oh, I got no. a lot of responses. 
I got oh, no. 600 of responses. And this girl messaged me, she's like, yo, I came here for memes, not 500 <laughs> opinions about Greta Thunberg. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I like but that. scroll down. I like that yeah, approach, nice man. I, I don't know, I can't. I think, because uh, posts get more reach than stories. Mm. So stories, I get like 3,000, 2,000 views. And all mm. these people kind of know me. So uh, yeah, I keep on like interacting with them. I don't, okay. I don't take the stuff to the post. The posts are the official BJJ memes. That's it. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah no, I, I try to mix and match them. But like, I definitely, I come to your stories to just get a laugh because you ask such a simple question, but the answers you get are bananas. Yeah, it's insane. Last, sometimes they're not nice. The latest thing was about the riots and the racism and the whole thing. I did it, and I was like, oh my God, you know what? I'm not going to reply. <laughs> I'm going to start another pandemic on my page if I reply. <laughs> <laughs> they were, abs- I, I think people are bored there at home. Yeah. And like, especially the jiu-jitsu people. Jiu-jitsu people, you can't trap them. They yeah. need to do it. They go crazy. So I got such politically charged responses. Oh no! And such slurs. I'm like, oh my god! If I post these, <laughs> it's gonna go bad. But yeah, man, you've always got that responder that has like this block of text prepared to launch on your page. You know, that guy with the extra, like, heavily opinionated comment. And you don't know what to do with these guys. Like, do you read every one of them? Do you give them any energy, or do you just kind of bail over those? Depends. Depends. Some people, some people, some people try to be woke, and I can't help but fire back on these people. Some people I ignore. So <laughs> latest one, you know, this this Nigerian actor who looks like a kid, who oh. always has the meme that oh my god, and he's holding. Oh something. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that guy looks like a kid, but he's actually forty years old. Yes. He's a male actor. So I made a meme about it. And I'm like, this year for jiu-jitsu players or whatever. I got this paragraph about how how an adult shouldn't be making fun of a kid who's traumatized and compare it to having to stay home. And this dude went on and on and on. I looked at well. him and I was like, bro, why? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Scroll down. He doesn't even follow me. You get these people from time to time. It's weird. Because I wouldn't scary. take time out of my day. <laughs> I wouldn't take time out of my day to post on someone else's meme and hate on them. You don't want to block me. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm not charging yeah. you for this. Yeah. This is what it is. But it, but it, gives you a, it gives you a scary idea of society. Like, you're now yeah. in Starbucks, right? Maybe there's 15, 20 people around you in Starbucks. One of them is a woke commenter, but you, you won't know it. <laughs> a woke right? commenter. <laughs> yeah, you won't know it unless you post something and he, he sees your post. Because in, in normal circumstances, they don't, they're not so woke. They're pretty quiet. I mean, uh, the screen makes you safe, I guess. Yes, big time, man. So it shows you the real inside of somebody, what they would do. So that's why I, I really think people should count to 10 before they post a woke comment. Yeah, yeah. And it's weird. You see a lot. Of, I remember one of them is... Uh, this is very early on. You know, the, there's a Tom and Jerry episode where Tom signs a, a contract for slavery, sells his kidney, enters 300, something like that. It was a joke. To... So I said, that's me buying a new G. I have to sign all these contracts <laughs> because these are expensive. I'm a student. These are expensive. So I made that meme. A lot of people laughed. And one of the gym owners that I personally know here in Malaysia, he doesn't know it's my page, okay. but I personally know in Malaysia. He comes in and he drops another paragraph. He's like, you guys are always complaining. If you don't, if you can't afford a gi, go work, go support your family. What are you doing here? I'm like, brother, brother, what do you want? What do you want? You're a 35 years old. You're a gym owner. Get out of my life. Why yeah. are you here commenting? It's weird. I never understand these people. If you don't like hey. it, just unfollow. Sometimes, you know, like, I'm sure I could grab you at a point in the day and you just have... Like, it'll be the worst timing for you to be exposed to something I say. Whereas another time of the day, it would have been perfect. So sometimes people, they just like, something bad happened. They're, they're pissed off about their financials and their business or something. And they scroll and they see a comment like that. Like, this is the fucking reason I'm not making money. <laughs> they go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro, come on. It's a mean page. Relax. Exactly. It's exactly. not like the Washington Post or anything. <laughs> Man, yeah, listen, I... I, I really hope that you continue doing what you're doing and I hope you do continue jujitsu because you have a talent. You're a very funny, nice guy. You're humble. Uh, I, I enjoy talking to you and, and I enjoy watching your memes. So don't quit. Stay in jujitsu. Inshallah.
Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. No promises. <laughs> Don't do that too much. You might break a finger. <laughs> Stay oh. safe. I swear. Start playing lapels and my fingers start hurting. I'm like, yo, this thing is not for me. <laughs> Listen, bro. Lapel guard is the antichrist of the body. And nobody's Your gonna say that. I know. I, I know you're promoting them and stuff, but I'm not. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I play lapel guard a lot. I'm very good at lapel guard. My How body. How your fingers? <laughs> man, my fingers. I've got. I have cuts 24/7 on my fingers because of this. I have scars on them. Oh God. But uh, oh God. my problem, I tell you, is the knees. Oh, your when knees. You play, when you play lapel guard, and you play guard retention, because lapel guard's about okay. main. You need to be able to do something. You can't just hold your opponent. Yeah. The transition time to do something is when they have the chance to escape. And in order to keep them, you have to put your foot on a piece of cloth that's moving in 360 yeah. degree angles, yeah. which your knee doesn't move in 360 degree angles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While an, an opponent is going crazy, pohada, uh, one of those yeah. like beast kind of opponents, the amount of times I've, I've messed up my LCLs is insane. Oh, yeah. I still did not reach that level, but that's definitely not motivating. <laughs> yeah, so, so no, be careful my, with lapel. Don't stick to it too long. <laughs> my knees are fine so far, yeah. but uh, ah, you don't never worry stop hearing about, about injuries. You never stop hearing about injuries in Jiu-Jitsu. It's a part of the, the system. Like athletes, you, you go to Cristiano Ronaldo, you go to those guys, they don't expect not ever to get injured. It's part of the sport, yeah. you know? But then I We're guess... Not, yeah. It's more rewarding for them. Did you say it's a very high risk, low reward kind of thing? <laughs> oh I don't my know. goodness! Well said. I don't know. You break your knee or something, and that's it. You're out. No money. Nothing. Your one hundred dollar <laughs> sponsor bails on you. <laughs> that sends you CBD oils once every month or something. And a patch. Yeah. And a patch. <laughs> oh, exactly. Man, so I'm not really sure about the jujitsu thing. But yeah, I hope. I hope for the sake of all these people that like sacrifice their body for this sport that it gets to the point where it makes sense. Yeah, I swear to God. I swear. I see my coach, especially the latest ones. Mm. Dude, the guy is broken. He is mm. broken. I swear to God. I don't know how he's working, but every single time, either his elbows, something, something with his knees, something with it. And then I'm asking him, like, what, what the hell happened? And he's like. Bro, it's jujitsu, man. I'm like, don't tell me jujitsu, man. How did you reach this level? And they would tell you their crazy stories in Brazil where they would do a hundred pull-ups, five hundred push-ups, something. I'm like, what kind of stuff are you guys on? But I guess some people really enjoy it. It's but I'm not that hardcore. They do, they do, but man, I'm telling you, like, there's a fine line between enjoying jujitsu and not living till fifty, because <laughs> because it it could get to a point where just Going upstairs hurts, man. I've been through that. What? That's why I had to taper God. down my jujitsu. My knees would God, hurt yeah. everything. But uh, anybody listening yeah. out there, man, that's still early in their journey, don't take it don't too get seriously. Demotivated. Yeah, don't get demotivated, but don't take it too seriously. Enjoy yeah, it. Like I, I like your approach, man. Enjoy the humor. Enjoy the community. It's not just about the taps. There's so much more yeah. to jujitsu. Yeah, 100%. Not all about the belts. Sometimes yeah, exactly. just being there, it's nice. That's it, man. That's it. So I enjoy yeah. this conversation with you, man. I appreciate yeah, you taking the too, time. Man. Sorry for all of the mess coordinating. Uh, I'm sorry glad we for did going it. in Starbucks. <laughs> I hope Relax. you can hear it. I will figure out the language. audio, but I, people will enjoy it anyway, my man. They love you anyways, yeah. and, right. and I'm sure they miss Starbucks, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Habibi, take care right. of yourself, buddy. Take care. Thank you. See ya.